Hello, Hidden Well Farmers. You're a great community, and I want to personally thank all of you for taking the time out to be with us um, at Hidden Well Farms. It's been quite a quite a journey so far, and every day is a new adventure. And I'm thankful that you have shared that with me. I try my very best to share happy stuff, stuff that's joyful and. You know, I have shared some problems and, you know, farming has difficulties like any other job. And of course, veterinary medicine, I've shared stories and things of that nature. But now I've come to something that is rather difficult. Behind me is Hurricane Emily. We'll just refer to her as Emily from this point forward. But Emily, <clears throat> if you'll remember from the last video, last week, last Friday, I came out very late in the evening. Now, I don't know how long she'd been out there. It was raining that day. My farm hand was sick, and so he was kind enough, uh, despite his terrible illness, he was kind enough to come out and feed that morning. I didn't get back out to the farm till about 7.30 that evening, and I heard some caterwauling on the back side of the farm. We went out and I told Susan, run out there on the four-wheeler while I'm working on this tractor and see what's going on if you can. And she did in just a few minutes, she motioned me to come out to the field. And so uh, I did and she was way back in the field and we had separated our pastures with some electric wire. I'll show you what it looks like. This is it right here. This is the electric wire. It's a very hard, very stout plastic that is woven with wire in it, okay? So it is very, very strong. I can pick up an 80 pound square bell and I can throw it, you know, seven bells high to stack it on a trailer, barely grunt. I mean, I'm stout as an ox. And I mean, I, I can't even stretch this stuff, let alone break it. And Nothing will dull your knife. And she found a piece of this that we had not uh, cleaned up out of the field. We had uh, some of it that had got grown up into the weeds and some of it had got grown in the grass. And so we weren't in that part of the field. Um, we had moved them and it was something we were gonna come back to. <clears throat> and frankly, it just got away from us. And uh, she found it. She found that one piece of wire that was still out there in the field. And how sheep are just amazing this way, how that she got her leg so entangled in this is just mind boggling to me. I don't know how she did it. I mean, it was, it was wrapped around her leg so tight in so many strands. And of course, the more that she tugged and twisted, the worse that it got. So by the time Susan found her, it was so tight, she couldn't even unwind it or get it off. I had to go out there and help. She held her while I cut the wire off of her. Brought her back to the barn and immediately started anti-inflammatory, started stress therapy because she was really stressed out, started uh, nursing her. And on Monday or Tuesday of this week, I kind of felt like things were starting to go a little sour. She had been making daily progress and so much so that, you know, I really thought that there was a good chance that everything was gonna be fine. Well, on about Tuesday of this week, going on into Wednesday, it was quite apparent that she was having some issues with that lower portion of her leg from about here down. And so I continued, I switched up her non-steroidal anti-inflammatory therapy, started her on some meloxicam. Um, I continued her antibiotic therapy. I, I was doing um, Naxel once a day and I switched it to oxytetracycline. Uh, none of those things made any difference whatsoever because she had already lost all of the blood supply to the bottom of her, of her foot. And so now it's falling off. It's dead. 
her body is rejecting it, and every day there is marked progression of disease in that leg, and it is starting to fall apart. She's still on antibiotics and still on anti-inflammatories. She acts fine. She's eating and she's drinking and she's even using that leg, although her hooves are beginning to fall off. She doesn't have any feeling in it because it's dead. That's the hard part. What do I do? So after talking to Susan yesterday, um, she couldn't be here tonight, and I was really heartbroken, and I didn't want to talk about it last night, you know, much about on camera. I told her that I needed to process it. I had to make a decision, and there's really only two. We have to humanely euthanize Emily, or we have to amputate the leg. Well, of course, in 27 years of veterinary practice, I've amputated hundreds of dogs and cats, a rabbit, turtle, and I'm sure if I thought about it long enough, I could think of other animals that I've amputated their legs on for gross, horrible injuries. It's always a salvage procedure, but sometimes a life-saving one. Most of the dogs that have had like bone cancer that I've amputated their legs on, it saved their life if you catch it early enough. But this is a sheep, this is a farm animal. And I really struggled within my own <coughs> thoughts and mind is if I amputated her leg, would I be helping her? She could die during the procedure. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Euthanasia or death under anesthesia. I mean, both really are humane. One of them, we're just trying to save her life. The other one, we're not. We're purposely euthanizing her. But then the post-op, how will she do? How will she act? Can she breed? Um, she's already tamed it down a lot. I've been using a lot of treats to kind of win her heart, and she's getting more and more used to being handled and petted. And now she's starting to look for me when I come in the barn for those treats. So the question is, um, can she live a long, good, quality, pain-free, functional life? So I've turned to YouTube and I've turned to some books that I have. And I've talked to some producers that have been, you know, raising sheep and goats a whole lot longer than, than I have. And the answer seems to be overwhelmingly, yes, they can do very well. It's better to lose a back leg than a front leg, which is the situation that I have here. I've never amputated a sheep's leg before of any shape, form, or function of kind. Um, I've never managed a amputated leg in a sheep. <clears throat> so there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for me with not only the surgical procedure, but also with her aftercare. And I thought that I would take you guys along and share with you that I'm very nervous for her and I'm very nervous for me. Um, I definitely love this sheep and she is a smaller hair sheep. She's Dorper Curtaudin and she is a beautiful sheep. She's got great structure. She's parasite resistant. Her mama and her line, great feet, genetics. And, um, you know, I'd like to keep her. I, I mean, and I know that sounds selfish, but I like my animals and I want to keep them. And so with her, um, after talking with Susan, because I was definitely leaning toward euthanasia last night, and after spending some time with other people's stories, I've made the decision that I'm going to amputate the lower part of her leg. And I'm gonna to have to do it very soon because I don't want her to get toxic. I don't want any more gangrene or anything else. So I'm gonna, in the next 24 hours, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna amputate that leg. And I'm gonna film that. So there's gonna be multiple series uh, that I'm gonna put on YouTube, on this channel about her prog you know, progress, her treatment, her surgery, her therapy, how she did after. 
And uh, Emily, I guess, is just going to be one of our star pupils, our star sheep, one of our uh, continuing saga stories at Hidden Well Farms. And I hope that you'll consider joining us on that way. This is not the right decision for everybody, and I get that. And some of you out there in this world, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that I'm going to get some comments, and that's okay. Leave all the nasty comments that you want. But we're going to do our very best to, uh, to try to help her. And if I feel that at any time she is not doing well, then I will euthanize her. I'm not going to allow her to suffer in any way. So, Hidden Well Farmers, um, this would be part one of the saga of Hurricane Emily. Thanks for being with us. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next video.